Greetings everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Workshop. And this time we're actually in my workshop, how cool is that? But um, yeah, so, um, quick little video today. I, uh, you know, did the uh, USDX uh, radio, we did the OGS 50 amplifier, and uh, you know, there's a key important item missing um, for getting all that on the air, and that's an antenna tuner. Uh, unless you're using a band specific antenna that's resonant on the band that you want to be working on, you need an antenna tuner. And so I've bought two uh, over the years. I bought the ATU 100 with the silver button on the front. It's a nice machine. It's been serving me well for, I'm going to go with two years now. But I need another one for a station that I'm setting up uh, at my other shop uh, that I kind of use as a coffee break lunchtime uh, play toy. And at the shop, I've got a random wire with a nine to one ballon. And um, it seems to work pretty good as it is on the 20 meter band and not so terribly well on any of the other bands. So I went on a mission. I went to find the cheapest antenna tuner that I could find. <laughs> And here we go again with uh, Walmart Canada. And uh, I stumbled across a machine that was listed for 48 Canadian dollars before tax. Free shipping. Hmm. I had Walmart points, so we got another freebie, basically. Um, and that is this guy here. This is the PLZ ATU 100-0A. Um, if you look at it, uh, you can clearly see that the screen kind of is smaller than the hole they made for it. Uh, it does have the appropriate buttons for tune, auto and bypass, and a USB port on the front. And the really cool part is I, uh, I plugged the supply cable uh, into it, and um, yeah, it, uh, it did something that, you know, we're always happy to see, and it fired up and I discovered it has an internal battery in it. Um, that battery takes about uh, two hours to charge. A uh, little bit of a bone picking here. The battery is glued to the top of the radio, as is a little charge controller that also has a boost converter in it that takes the 3.8 volts of the lithium pouch cell and turns it to the 12 volts this machine needs. A little problem with that though. So if you let this thing sit for about a week or two, you'll have a dead battery. Uh, but if you charge it and use it, it's good for about four or five hours runtime and uh, seems to do a great job. Uh, construction wise, well, it's $48 quality. Um, yeah, it, it's a little rough around the edges, but it does work. Uh, inside, uh, like I said, the battery's glued, the uh, charge controller's glued, uh, the wiring is as thin as they possibly could make it. Um, if you're going to use this with a uh, USDX uh, style radio, um, you'll have to change the uh, firmware in this. Not a real big deal. You will have to solder a cable on there and uh, uh, hijack, I believe, four or five other cables to get your pick, um, pick kit uh, unit attached to it. Other than that, there's some great videos on uh, YouTube on how to actually do that change. And what it does is basically allow this unit to tune at uh, uh, power levels of one to five watts. Uh, so you'll run into some issues where your antenna might be just a little bit too unresonant during the tune cycle. It's gonna drop down to below one watt and not tune. Um, the only thing you can do at that moment is change your antenna up a little bit. But you can actually make this thing work with low power radios. And so that's basically all I, uh, all I gotta say, um, pleasantly surprised, $50 unit. Don't know if they got any left, but um, would I pay a hundred and something plus change for this unit? No, no I wouldn't. But if you can get it for 50 bucks, it's perfect for your go bag um, and uh, might help you get some more contacts when you're out in the uh, parks or, or whatever it is that you wanna do. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. I'm Victor Echo 7, November Golf Kilo, and this is Tom's Workshop. Have a good one, my friends.